So while I do want to devote this month's random reviews to things that are a little bit more off topic and give you some variety, there are some more Transformers I will be covering, but I'll make sure they are interesting, bizarre, and or just weird. And that certainly applies to today's review. This is Beast Wars Mutant Poison Bite. Uh, I've reviewed one mutant in the past, and if you've never seen one of these guys, what happened was they did a toy line for Animorphs, and it was branded as a Transformer line, as it as you do. Um, problem is, the toy line sucked. See future Plastic Addict episodes. However, they did have a few molds left over. These in particular, where one animal turned into another animal, and the only semblance of any human left over is a head that was hidden somewhere on the body. It's kind of a bizarre idea. So they recast these as Beast Wars characters, did the appropriate remolding, and now we have these bizarre things. So let's begin. Poison Bite starts life as a Barracuda, because when you're fighting a war of beasts, you want to make sure you have a fish on your team. It's more necessary than you might realize. Everything on him is cast in the same shade of red plastic, outside of some slight variations for parts that are made of slightly durable, more durable stuff. So everything else you see color-wise is all paint. That's a lot of paint. But, I don't know, for the most part, it works out. I mean, it's a pretty creepy appearance. Like, I like the tiger stripe style pattern on the sides. This blue is gorgeous. Like, it is such a bizarre color to put on the red, but it kind of works. Kind of. But it's it's got such a good shimmer to it. It's this beautiful deep blue color. Man, like, I don't know what else, but something else needed to use this color of paint because it's absolutely awesome. And then we have the head itself. Poison Bite is uh, not a happy guy from the looks of it. He's a little bit dusty, too, because, come to think of it, this isn't something I tend to pull down once, you know, often enough to keep him dust-free. But you can see the face fully painted, eyes done up in blue, a little bit of airbrushing on the nose, and the teeth done up all the way around on both sides. So, good paint job work there. Good paint all the way around. Now, because of its dual beast nature, he does come off a little bit weird in the shapes and proportions area. These fins, for instance being strangely craggy and shell-looking, as well as some strange kind of thin things stuck to the side where his underbelly would be. And yeah, I mean, just from this angle, this look, you know, like this, this looks like something that pops out of your chest in an alien movie. Like, ah, my God. Oh no. I don't know. I'm just goofing around. It's bizarre. It is, is a bizarre way of we'll making the fin. You'll see why just here in a minute. So, yeah, it's a fish. It's a fish. So what can the fish do? Well, the fish can open and close its mouth. So you have that going for you. Ball joints in the fins, so they are adjustable. And because of the ball joints and hinges here, you actually can raise and lower this fin too. So you have a surprising amount of playability in your toy fish. Also, he does what a lot of Beast Wars bugs could not do, and actually can stand up on his appendages. It's a little bit loose, but hey, it's there. As well as I'll show you, same blue on the underside. That gives you the fin. Doesn't look the right way. Yeah, you know, yeah, the fin's backwards that way, so we'll keep it this way. So that is our fish mode. And let's get this guy transformed, and if you've never seen Poison Bite, try to guess what we are building as it goes. It won't take you too long. So I'm going to start by unpegging these parts and splitting that open. I can open up some of the little parts on the side that are ball jointed in. And we will unfold what is obviously a scorpion tail. Gee, that game didn't last too long, did it? Alright, let me get this unpegged. That can rotate around like so. These are actually arms that can unfold. We will split this open and fold the fins over the face. I like doing this just because because now it looks like he's scared and hiding. <laughs> Problem is, he's scared of the dark, so he's not doing himself any good. 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, we can get these big panels. The sides of the fish are entirely paneled up. We can fold the fin down, rotate these down to the underside. Well, actually, hang on. Do things in the right order, TJ. That's how a professional reviewer does it. Yay. All right. These can rotate all the way around. It's pretty involved transformation for a fish. These, those peg in like so. Rotate this one around as well. There we go. All right, with that done, you can do more rotation, which counts to bringing these down, pointing downward. Of course, I'm going to... Yeah, there's ball joints in here to work around. I'm going to rotate ball joint like so. So this points forward. Open up the, what's now the clock. Stop it. Nice. So what happens when I pick a toy for review and it works out for me fine when testing out and then I actually get it to the review stage and it starts not cooperating on me. Okay, so that's all smoothed out. That actually looks okay now. We can open these up. To actually look like the scorpion's claws and then we flip out a scorpion head do some last adjustments here man this transformation takes longer on camera when i'm trying to get everything included and there with some oddies and a slight bit of difficulty here and there <laughs> is poison bite in his scorpion mode our third scorpion of the Beast Wars, once again, a different character. Uh, this is probably the oddest of the batch. So as you can see, he pretty much has no new colors or detailing. There's some extra paint going around, but it's the same pattern. For instance, more, more of this black and yellow on the tail. The only real major change to the detailing is the face is now exposed. So now we have a scorpion head. Well something of a scorpion head uh only got two eyes but whatever it's a uh, it's a mutant it's a mutant so uh that's uh that's why it uh, doesn't look right it's also why its back two legs don't reach the ground <laughs> um yeah there's a lot of little ways of adjusting on this toy um there's i i have not found any that lets me get that low enough to the ground and still look okay i guess we can Kind of do that, but now they're... See, they just kind of tuck up under his butt. And man, it doesn't look right. Just They don't pass for legs at all, which is unfortunate. So, yeah, let's actually look at him from a distance. Like, he does, like, have... Strangely enough, he has, like... This very intimidating mutant scorpion look to him, but at the same time, he manages to look kind of silly because he's got so many other things going on. For instance, you can still see the molding of the fish appendages. However, you'll now notice the edges are molded like bug legs, so they have the segments in the right spot and everything. So they are doing double duty, and they're trying to get it correct. What's really distracting is the fact that his pinchers have teeth, which I'm pretty sure is not something that, uh, I'm not, I'm pretty sure that's not something scorpions actually have. Ridges, barbs, yes. Teeth, no. It looks like some Lovecraftian horror is what it looks like. Uh, on the back end, we do have the scorpion tail, big and bulbous poison sack thing up here. Uh, there's no real motion to it. You know, it pretty much stops right there. So while you do have two hinges, three, now that I actually count them out, they don't really have any kind of striking range. However, there is a bit of gimmick here, because if I push down the stinger, it does flip up the robot mode head. And I don't think this is going to be the screen cap for this episode. I'm pretty sure this is not the thumbnail, because this is the one head close-up that would not make sense to anybody. Yeah, it's this very strange flat head with no real definition. It's vaguely robotic, but I'm not entirely sure what it's going for. So it's just kind of there. Some other semblances of a robot are the faction symbol, which is done up here on the side in a chrome, which is kind of a strange choice for faction symbols. And underneath, the slightest bit of robotic detail. 
just to remind you, yes, this is supposed to be a robot in disguise. And that jump cut brought to you by my local mailman, who had some glios to drop off for me, so that'll get repainted at some point. But let's get back to the topic at hand. We are dealing with a fish that turns into a scorpion who now needs his articulation run down. Well, as I already said, he does have three hinges in the tail, so he does have some range of posability there, just no range of attack motion. Uh, we do have arms that are decently articulated. You got hinges here at the shoulder point, at what would be an elbow, what would be a wrist. I'm working with what I got here. I'm trained to only review robots. Help me, I don't know what I'm doing! Okay, so you do have a lot of range going inward, not so much outward because of how it's, uh, how the ball joints are cut, but that also gives you lots of rotation in all directions, so as far as uh, Beast Wars Scorpions go, he's probably got the most poseable claws. I wish they looked better in a more natural position, but they, they, uh, they really don't, unfortunately. Uh, the big thing is the legs. Now, they are all on ball joints. No, while these two are on one, uh, these are individual ball joints. So you got six in total. Unfortunately, the ball joints don't have a whole lot of range for you to work with because of the way the ball joints have been cut. They're meant for the transformation rather than articulation here. So while I can get this one back a little bit and we can even out his stance, this one really doesn't have a whole lot of places to go. It can rotate and it can bend inward, but not a whole lot of positioning that's going to look natural and keep that the arachnid leg in its proper positioning, which is unfortunate. So the legs really don't have the articulation I would expect out of something that's, you know, mostly legs. But he makes up for it in the claws, I guess, so he does have some range that can uh, account for playability. But, yeah, that's pretty much all there is. The whole gimmick of these guys was the hidden head thing and the fact that they were two beasts in one. So, no real spring out flip effects, no hidden missile launchers, no water squirting gimmicks, no discs firing. He's just one animal who turns into another. And what better animal combination do you have than a fish that swims in the water to a scorpion commonly found in the desert? I'm sure it will come in handy. So, that is Beast Wars poison bite a very odd ball one if there ever was one and he certainly is one um this is all the mutants i have you've seen both of them now there are two others one is entirely made of gold plastic and thus i will not even attempt to own it or transform it at any point and the other one for some reasons really expensive i don't entirely know why so unless i get lucky on ebay or something this is the end of the mutants on random review so with that, we will say adieu to these extremely bizarre moments in Transformer history, at least for now.